Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank Laura and Rob for organizing this session and for allowing me to uh, participate in presenting this. Uh, today, I would, I would like to talk about uh, missing persons and, in particular, some uh, technologies. Sorry, some technologies that uh, can be helpful for um, uh, advanced technology that can be helpful for uh, finding uh, these uh, uh, persons. Um, first of all, you have to know that. Uh, when you deal with uh, missing persons uh, is a um, uh, very kind of complicated uh, scenario. Uh, complicated by the fact that you are not only looking for um, missing persons, but you, are, you need to deal not only with law enforcement, but also with the uh, family and the uh, friends of uh, the people involved in these cases. So you have to... Uh, be very knowledge uh, and uh, you have to be very committed to this kind of uh, uh, people. Uh, there is a huge kind of uh, idea behind uh, the word missing. Uh, what is actually a missing person? A missing person it's a phenomenon that it's uh, worldwide of course and it's not only involving people uh, uh, in countries in which you have civil wars, as we have seen in the presentation before. Uh, missing persons, it's uh, also a social phenomenon for in every single country. So you can have uh, problems uh, related to missing persons and cases of missing persons, even in countries in which there are no wars uh, at all. And also missing persons are uh, actually all kind of persons, so from uh, children till very old uh, people. And sometimes happen that uh, the people believe that missing persons are just children or very old uh, people, but it's not actually uh, the case. So um, it's important that uh, forensic archaeology, and in particular forensic geoarchaeology, can be involved in, the, in solving uh, uh, or in searching for uh, missing persons, because forensic geoarchaeology, by its nature, it's a sort of uh, holistic approach that can actually take into account every single aspect of uh, the landscape, for example, in which that kind of person uh, um, uh, disappeared. So you can actually use several uh, uh, elements that uh, are typical of uh, geoarchaeology for uh, understanding and try to narrowing down okay, the area of research because new technologies and geoarchaeology can help for narrowing down the area of search. And this is the most relevant part uh, when you start to uh, search uh, a, a missing person. Um, there are also several myths related to missing persons and I, uh, I am a witness uh, in different kind of countries, uh, that there are still uh, people uh, within the law enforcement believing that you have to wait 24 hours or 48 hours uh, before uh, starting for a missing person. And this is, of course, uh, wrongful everywhere in the world, okay? You don't have to wait 24 or 48 hours. You have to search the missing persons right after uh, the reporting of the missing persons. And there are other kind of myths, like, for example, if uh, I have, again, uh, a former, let's say, former missing person missing again, uh, it's not necessary to 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 search her uh, um, uh, search for for her for him because uh, it's um, it's um, let's say it's she, she or he already did this and it's not necessary. Uh, seems to be strange. Maybe it's not a myth for you. It's not uh, something that you have heard, but actually this happened in uh, within the law enforcement sometimes, not always, but sometimes. Um, about the searching people uh, within the first 24 hours, actually it's very important because uh, based on these statistics on, on UK, uh, you can see that uh, a high percentage of uh, people uh, was, uh, uh, um, are found actually in, uh, within the, the 24 or 48 hours, so they are co they're called golden hours, for example, for this reason. So if you lose 
these two, one or two days of, or in searching a person, it's a high, there is a high possibility that you never find that person. <clears throat> and the other aspect that uh, has to be uh, highlighted is the fact that uh, law enforcement actually is uh, the first uh, um, element that can uh, uh, do a search and rescue uh, um, activity uh, because, uh, again, from this uh, UK statistics, you can see that uh, most of, excluding the return of own free will people, but the other percentage is related to the people found by the police. So it's necessary that the police uh, and the law enforcement know very well the uh, techniques and the advanced technology that can help in missing persons. Sometimes I found law enforcement, not here, but in general, uh, in the places in which, in the countries in which I worked, uh, they are uh, very uh, 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 related to ancient kind of uh, approaches in missing persons. And this is, of course, no, it's a huge detriment for, uh, for the search and rescue, uh, re rescue activity. <clears throat> so one of the new technologies that can help, so now I would like to show you some of, of the advanced technology that you can use uh, during the search of missing person. It's not uh, uh, and uh, a perfect method. In science, we don't have perfect method and perfect solution. We don't have magic wands for uh, finding missing persons, but you can use in different kind of scenarios, in specific kind of scenarios, different kind of tools, uh, thanks to the, uh, uh, the advancement in technology, the uh, artificial intelligence, the OSINT, all these all these kind of uh, sources can help to narrowing down. Again, the, the aim is narrowing down the search uh, of uh, a missing person, the area in which you search a missing person. One of these, it's called locus operandi. It's uh, similar to the modus operandi uh, kind of style, but it's more related on uh, the missing person. So the uh, activity of uh, the uh, missing persons before uh, her or his disappearance. So you can actually, uh, like um, the same kind of equation that we have used, we are using actually for uh, serial killers, okay, the same kind of equation, you can actually apply that kind of uh, uh, equation to a missing person, just again to narrowing down the area in which this kind of person can be found. And this was used actually uh, uh, during the lockdown period. Uh, in the lockdown period, in particularly uh, in Italy, but everywhere in the world, uh, we had uh, an increase of disappearance, increase of missing persons related to uh, mental health, uh, mental health issues. Um, this kind of problem uh, was uh, so big that, of course, was necessary to find a solution to uh, narrowing down and to shortening, shortening the uh, research of these persons. And this is the, the way in which the locus operandi is working. As I told you, it's like uh, the same kind of equation, equation uh, from uh, Rosmo that he actually applied to, sorry, he applied to uh, the serial killers, but it's possible to apply it also to uh, missing person. So you can actually ask some specific questions in order to reconstruct the spatial behavior of the missing persons before missing. Okay, It's nothing related to a crime, of course, like the serial killers, but it's related to the uh, frequency, okay, the special, spatial behavior of the missing persons before uh, gone missing. And if you ask to uh, a specific question to the person coming uh, uh, for reporting a missing uh, case, uh, you can actually ask specific question and you can reconstruct uh, a special behavior of this person. Reconstructing the special behavior of this uh, person, you can actually narrowing down the area of the search. I would like to show you some examples. Uh, uh, this is a, an example uh, from Italy in which this person 
uh, uh, disappeared uh, in uh, March 2020, again, in the middle of the lockdown period for Italy. Um, and uh, the locus operandi was applied uh, for uh, narrowing down the area of search. And you can see the yellow area was the locus operandi with a, foc a focus point, a central point uh, in the uh, yellow dot. Uh, and the person was found actually where you can see uh, the red dot. And uh, you see the, uh, the diameter of this uh, area, it's about one kilometer, so it's not a big area. Normally, when you start to search, you are searching randomly, okay? Uh, spending a lot of time, a lot of uh, people, and uh, a lot of money, okay? Without any kind of clues. This can actually focusing and narrowing down the area of research uh, pretty, pretty well. Um, and well, the, the other, uh, unfortunately, the body was found three weeks later because this is a problem of uh, Italian law enforcement. They use new technology only if you are lucky, only if you are at the last resort, let's say. Okay, so if it, only if it's the last hope uh, that you can use. So unfortunately, this, was, uh, um, this kind of method was applied only uh, after uh, the attempts, uh, the uh, uh, useless attempts of the uh, law enforcement. Uh, another case, another Italian case, uh, in the previous case was um, uh, a young lady. This one, it's an old uh, uh, guy uh, that disappeared uh, in this area, in, in the area of north of Italy. And the locus operandi in this case is not a circle, but was a different kind of uh, geometry. And the body was found actually where you see again a big red dot uh, over there. Also here was used like uh, last hope, last resort, and the body was found two weeks later. So the, the day after they called me and asked me for the locus operandi, uh, the day after they found the body, thanks to this. Uh, the last case uh, is uh, related to this, in which another person with mental health issues uh, uh, disappeared, and the body was found again within the locus operandi. In this case, just to give you an idea of the Italian law enforcement, uh, the approach to the search and rescue activities on the Italian law enforcement, you see the picture over there. The body was actually in the uh, canal uh, on the right of the picture. Uh, on, in the middle of the picture, there were uh, vegetation. Now you can see it's very low vegetation, cut vegetation. Actually, during the search, was very high, more almost three meters vegetation. And the uh, uh, people, the law enforcement, said, well, we checked this area, but then we found three meters vegetation and we cannot see behind this three meter veg vegetation, so we can stop, we stop over there. So we actually didn't check the canal for this reason. So it's, you can understand the approach of the Italian law enforcement for the search and rescue activity. So you can imagine why they never use this kind of te new technologies and they use it like just a last resort, last hope for them. Um, there is also uh, another possibility together with the locus operandi to searching missing persons. It's the use of multispectral or hyperspectral images. So as you know, everything on the planet Earth on the surface, they have a spectral signature. Spectral signatures means that you can be uh, detectable because you have a sort of ID uh, of, uh, of yourself. So uh, the uh, different kind of vegetation, they have different kind of spectral signature. So one tree is different from another one for spectral signature. Uh, buildings or artificial uh, elements, they have different kind of spectral signature and so on, like the bodies. Also our bodies, they have a different kind of spectral, spectral signature respect to uh, animals or, or grass or whatever. Okay, so it's possible to detect uh, uh, a missing person, uh, a deaf missing person on the surface of the planet Earth using multispectral or hyperspectral uh, images. This is a case in south of Italy in which these two uh, mother and, and kid were uh, disappeared because they had a car accident and they just jump out uh, the car and they start to uh, walk uh, on the countryside and uh, they disappeared. So uh, the problem that the normal, the traditional search found the bodies of these two uh, several days later on. They first found the mother and then the, the, the kid. 
uh, actually uh, more than two weeks later, okay? Uh, and of course, you can imagine that in the countryside, in the middle of the summer in Italy, uh, the bodies were so uh, dismembered uh, by scavengers and whatever that was impossible to determine the cause of death. Uh, they, they, the um, uh, public attorney uh, decide to uh, close the case because of not enough information about the cause of death. So the, 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 um, the case was closed without actually a reason of why they disappeared and why they died. Okay. Uh, the problem is that they never used this kind of method for searching spectral signature because using that kind of method they can use um, uh, infrared images, satellite images like this one in order to search actually anomalies related to uh, the uh, spectral signature of both the mother and the kid. Actually they were closer the day after. This is a picture. This, Im this image is satellite image of the day after the disappearance, so just 24 hours later. The advantage of the satellite images is that they are geostationary satellites, so they can collect pictures every day of the same area. So with this kind of information, they can actually detect the two bodies in less than 24 hours. In this case, specific case, there was another uh, uh, glitch, let's call glitch, that uh, they, ne they just flew, the, flew drones above the area the day after, and actually they never checked the images of the drones, just flew the drones without checking the images. Actually, the images show the two bodies exactly in the position of the satellite images as well, but they never checked these images. Uh, the last uh, method that I would like to show you, and again, it's a complementary method. I don't want to uh, say that this method has to change or completely uh, uh, um, um, cancel the, the, the traditional search and rescue methods, but they are complementary methods. So you have to use these kind of methods together with the traditional methods. It's, the, it's called N NDWY. And it's basically uh, the, uh, it's similar to the NDVI that probably you know better. It's the uh, index of the growing of the vegetation. But in this case, it's uh, related to the uh, water. Uh, it's an, a water index. So basically, you can actually detect the presence of water in the uh, surface, okay? So you said, what, what, what's the purpose for a missing person? Well, if you focus this NWI not on the, uh, terrain on the surface, but you focus on rivers or in general uh, um, uh, high, um, water uh, uh, water uh, um, scenarios, surface water areas, okay, you can actually uh, detect, of course, water, but you can also detect anomalies inside the waters. So if your, your missing person is related to a possible missing persons inside a water, you can actually use this NWI with the satellite images for detecting anomalies inside the water. <clears throat> and this is the index, how it's working. And again, it's working with the near-infrared uh, images. And this is an application of this case uh, uh, to another Italian uh, disappearance of this old person. This old person disappeared in this uh, area here where you see the yellow asterisk on the right. Um, you can see it's a canal uh, going inside a major river. Uh, we are in Tuscany, this is the Arno River. Uh, and uh, the canine uh, um, unit, the dogs, uh, detect the trace of the person till uh, the uh, the limit of the canal. Then they lost their uh, their uh, the, um, uh, the trace. So uh, if you do the NWY, you can obtain an image like this one. Okay, and you can see that there are some values, some positive and negative values. Okay, positive values are related to uh, uh, basically uh, the um, the river. Okay, so the water, so positive values are water, basically. Uh, what you have to uh, understand are the negative values within the river, not outside the river, because your focus is uh, the river in this case. So looking at the negative values inside the river, just inside the river, you can obtain this kind of map in which you, the triangles showing you some anomalies. Of course, it's not highlighting 
the presence of a body for sure. It's highlighting anomalies that are not water. So they are uh, they are highlighting only non-water uh, anomalies. Okay, uh, and this can be uh, some uh, garbage included. Okay, so it's not necessarily a body. Uh, this happened. Uh, in other cases in which instead of a body in one of these anomalies there was a, uh, um, a surfboard, for example, or a fridge in a river. I know this happened, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it's not natural, but this can happen. So it's not only related to a body okay, in a river, but of course it can actually detect a uh, few anomalies along the river. Instead of checking the whole river, you can check only a few spots, okay, and double check if it's a body or not. And actually, in this case, there were uh, four uh, anomalies detected, one in the canal and the other three along the river, and uh, then uh, actually the body was found here close to one of these triangles. Uh, so this is uh, actually something particularly relevant because it's narrowing down again a lot uh, the search and, uh, and, and can save a lot of time. So, and now we are coming to a UK case that was a very huge coverage in media uh, all over the world, not only in UK. And I, I was not involved in this case at all, but I'm, I just elaborate the data just for scientific curiosity and I would like to show you this data for this reason. This is the case, okay, all of you knows that this case for sure. Um, uh, this person disappeared inside a river, and uh, again, I don't want to uh, uh, fuel uh, an argument on this case, on what happened, I'm just, I was only curious to see if it was possible to detect the body using this kind of system, so I did it after the discovery of the body. And again, I don't want to discuss the, all the stuff that was around this. But basically, this is the summary of what happened. The person disappeared uh, over there. You can see uh, the, the area along the river. Uh, and uh, they uh, tried to search her, but they uh, cannot actually find, uh, find the body. They also search inside the river as well. Uh, and this picture, so she disappeared the 27th of January. Unfortunately, the cons of this method and the satellite images is that if you have a cloudy uh, uh, um, coverage, it's impossible to, to, to see the, 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 the picture, of course, because of the clouds. Uh, this picture is from the 30th of January, so three days after. Uh, and you see there are few clouds over there, but it's not a big deal for the river. Uh, and I did the analysis, the NWY analysis, uh, in the same way that we have seen before. And based on the NDWI analysis, I found some negative anomalies along the river. Um, and are these kind of anomalies, seven anomalies, six anomalies, sorry, uh, you see in the triangles over there. Uh, we are talking about January the 30th, okay? so. Uh, actually, uh, during this kind of ana analysis, I found these anomalies, but again, I cannot be sure if it was the body or if it, it was anything else. But are six spots that you can actually check precisely because you have the coordinates of each point. So instead of checking the whole river, you can start to check these points. And actually, the body was found later on, uh, several days later on, in that area over there. So now I cannot tell you if the 30th of January was already stuck, uh, 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 the, the body over there, or maybe it was another anomaly or whatever. But this is just to give you an idea of the capability and the possibility of this kind of methods in missing persons inside uh, the water. So summarizing, uh, it's uh, very, very important that uh, the law enforcement, but in general, the people in, uh, involved in search and rescue uh, knows very well uh, the new technologies and do not actually go in, going against the OSINT or going against the uh, artificial intelligence or going against this new technology and thinking about something strange or not scientifically uh, uh, relevant. They have they have they they have to remain open-minded to this, and uh, can help 
and can be uh, very, very helpful uh, in different kind of ways, uh, including the possibility of uh, collecting information from former missing persons that can help you to understand the reasons behind the missing persons. As I told you at the very beginning, it's a huge phenomenon. It's a complicated phenomenon. It's not only uh, technology involving that. It's also psychological and, and uh, uh, sociocultural kind of uh, involvement uh, in this. For sure, you need uh, what we call the four Ps, the protection, the provisions, the participation, and the prevention in order to obtain the best results. Uh, and I think that forensic geoarchaeology is the only uh, um, uh, kind of activity that can help search and rescue for missing persons because it's more keen on advanced technology and analysis of the landscape. Mm -hmm.